Hello all, Zysos here. We're doing another base tour because I have way too many of these to get through before the next sector update. I'm hoping once I catch, I catch up on these that I could do these at a regular pace and actually have some raider content. But we'll get to that in a minute. For today we're going to be doing the pontoon beach here. Uh, you'll notice from the preview, it's not a particularly great preview. Honestly, the the bedrock that spawned really spawned really far up and forward, which made it difficult to make something that looks super interesting. I think I've done not completely terrible. Like you can tell that I've spent some effort to actually make roofs and whatnot, so it's not completely without merit. But I think it does look a little bit better once we actually get into the base. So it is a Traps Advisor, 9000 Gen Mat, because at this point I believe everything going forward will have 9000 Gen Mat. The, it is a normal, it is a small, it's had 61 raid attempts for a 4.4 kill ratio, 268 kills. The accolades, there are 64 of them, uh, 22 fun, 13 brutal, 19 ingenious, 10 artistic, which means that fun and ingenious are the most common, which I feel like is the equivalent of like fun brutal from a brutal map, but because they're normal difficulty, they're not actually that hard. And it means the ratio for accolades to raids is about one, which is what I'm aiming for. I don't think you can guarantee that you're going to get two from everyone, and even just bal uh, balancing the number of twos you get versus ones is good enough. If every map, if every map I made made one um, raid to accolade ratio, I would be happy with that. If that was my minimum, which going forward I think it is, but is. Like, obviously, these maps go as far back as my abs actual first one, so that not all of them were as good as they, as this point going forward. Anyway, let's jump straight into playing this map. So many ways I could have handled that run better. Okay, so anyway, this is Pontoon Beach. Uh, let's go over the actual map now. Uh, I believe it started as a 750. I'm pretty sure that's the 2575 is what they end up as if you start at 750. I'd have to double check that though. Uh, as I was mentioning before, we've got this bedrock that's really far forward. It does have some holes in it. You could probably do something interesting with it if you were that way inclined when building, but this map I wasn't really intending to mess with that too much, I just wanted to make something simple. Markings go straight to the tomb, which is down here. Another thing that I probably could have worked into the level if I was building up for it. But that's not really what I wanted to do, I just wanted to make something simple to throw into the 
active Q because I didn't have anything at the time. Did aim to try and make like a church thing. I was trying to make like a something similar, a similar idea to Kennesaw, where it looks like it might be a church. So that's why we're using all these church blocks and the rocket home slopes, along with the white brick, similar to what I did for Kennesaw. Uh, and we've got a bit of iconography with these cross lights. Once we get in, there, it's for later. Yeah, so this here is all actual bedrock. This is part of the problem with the bedrock being really far forward, but I noticed that because I've already got these three blocks here, I can pretty easily put one here and no one really sees it. Though, I did just use it for a monster closet with these two here. The reason for this is if when you're this here being second wave so that you can't they don't come out until later you'll notice that when they're stacked like this it's really hard to get over them get over the warmonger without killing it and while you're dealing with the warmonger you're often under threat from the hornet which is a pretty good setup and they take about a corridor to fill up so it's a reasonable amount of capacity for what it does but it also is pretty good for the it's a pretty good like speed run trap for a normal base because you can't do something bigger like the four pistons the four piston hallway with the incinerator at the end that that isn't gonna fly on a normal difficulty base but something like this can sometimes catch people that are speed running, which is nice. These here are just to try and slow the raider down a little bit on when the second wave gets here. And you'll notice that the floors are alternating between red and white, except for when there's bedrock. So red, white, red, white. I originally had them all alternating red, white fully, but I opted to keep the bedrock as bedrock so that these hollow cubes would work in the long run. This here with the T with the plus above the T um, was supposed to be the like religious symbology for the church here. The, originally I had that on the outside as well where that plus sign is but then I put the roof on here and once I had the roof on I couldn't put the T down here it just didn't look right. Um, so I figure that's like the small version, and then, but it actually, if it was drawn out in full, it would look more like this. This guard up here, I believe has dead man switch, reflex manipulation, and dead man switch. Okay. So the aim here, that guy down there, the cannon back, is the most dangerous. Uh, he's moving slightly to the side so we can get a better view on the player when they're coming around this corner because it'll be able to see it when they're about here instead of if it stays in the center it would actually be somewhere here just a little bit further along that cannon back has full range in here it's also armored so that it normally takes two shots to deal with so if you're using the vault lance that thing's going to take two of your shots and you're only going to have one shot to deal with this whole room as a normal difficulty base, this is most likely going to be tackled with Vault Lance and Fury's Edge. And you can't use Fury's Edge to deal with this. The only thing that can really deal with this at this range is the Falconic Plasma Bow. You just you aggro it, it pulls out its gun, and then you shoot the gun. You could go for the head if you're a good shot, but the gun is just an easier target. Now, for the talking about this guy. This guy here, the reason he's here is that if you step in here to try and get a cleaner shot on the cannon back, he will then aggro um, and he's halved to sit up on the back right uh, there so that he's got a better view of when you come around this corner but not so much down here. If I wanted him to see down here, I would want to path him down closer to this edge. But also, you can't immediately see him 
Ada. So you're about here. So you you're in a threatened area when that guy can see you. Uh, like you've already triggered the cannon back, that can be hard to deal with, and then you've got this this guard here to deal with as well. And if you shoot this guy, because he's on a slope, he immediately rolls down and lands to about here and blows up, which doesn't really damage anything around him, but like it doesn't even trigger this most of the time. And the um we I do get a did get a few kills from that because they would take it out. And then they'll you know start aiming at the cannon back and die. This trap here, because I've got so much bedrock around that is actually bedrock before it, this all looks normal, and you've got to choose a bedrock block. Most people choose the one that goes direct because it's better for them, even though, like, it's almost always the trap. You normally want to go the f longest route you can whenever you're doing one of these, whenever you've got an option, because that's generally what the builder has left as the safe path. Quite a few people just walk across here, fall in, die. If this wasn't a normal difficulty base, I expect people would jump over it, would trigger it and then jump out of it, that would be fine. There are ways to counter that, which I've done in other bases, but because of the high ceilings I wasn't really able to do much about it this time around. So yeah, the step in, sometimes they fall through, sometimes they, double, they react in time and double jump out. The reason this here isn't a leading to a corrosion cube is because I think if you're gonna get caught by if you're gonna get caught and fall in, it, it's gonna be this one. It's gonna be the soonest one. It's not gonna be this one. You're not gonna go, oh, that's a hollow cube. I should go to the second closest one and then fall in. In fact, I don't think I've ever seen someone actually fall into this, which is funny because. Most of the time, this trap doesn't blow itself up. Because what is happening here is this is a chaos bomb bomb trap. And chaos bombs gives it more speed when it's initially fire, uh, firing, so they actually fly to about here and start landing on all these other blocks around it. Which means that this block here is often actually safe. Which means that the instincts to, when hitting a, when standing on a hollow cube, to jump out of it, or even to jump over bedrock to try and avoid hollow cubes in general, both of those will still trigger this trap. Which, this was a fairly late addition, but it was very efficient. For, yeah, what do we got here? 80? 80 points? 80 points for the trap and another 20, so 90. Oh, 100, sorry. Yeah, so for 100 capacity, this was very efficient. It got quite a lot of the kills in here. West of these, the two incinerators are to block off the cannon back, make it slightly harder to approach get your ammo back. The two bolt traps are just there because people were constantly approaching directly from the front. These would both fire in that case and the both got hunter on them. I think they both got double down as well. Yeah, so you can, sometimes you can get them blocked by this but they would then trigger as they come back out if they didn't see them. This one here is significantly more effective because when I put in this this little bit here, this little triangle, I thought it was too obvious that there was a trap on the other side, so I put this thing in here. I already previously had one of these up here. This is from the DLC, the the Egyptian themed DLC. It's the uh, animated decoration. So I've always had this one here, 
as like a centerpiece uh, for this. Like I'm picturing this as like the altar at the end, uh, at the end of the church. Yeah, so I always had that, but by you copying that same iconography, it looks really obvious that that one is not for a trap from this distance. And then this one just looks kind of like a repeat of that. Like, so maybe I'm trying to, maybe I thought it looks cool to have two of them instead of one. And in actually, in actually, it's just to hide this trap because it looks too obvious if I don't put that there. And for one capacity for this one block here, that was a pretty good deal. You'll notice that the, we're using the white stone for the roof here because the church blocks, when you put them on an angle, stairs. And I didn't want stairs on my roof. I couldn't use the rug at home ones either because the rug at home ones have tiling, which is the stuff used on the outside for the roof. These two bomb traps, these used to be staggered a bit more. There used to be like one here, one here, one here, all pointing on, down on the diagonal in this area here. But the one that was here or here, I don't remember which side they were on, used to trigger these bomb, uh, used to trigger these hollow cubes a bit too often. I wasn't really liking that. And these two do roughly the same job that the three did previously, so which is to make this area here. Basically, this area here is supposed to be super chaotic. Uh, and I believe there's very little overlapping. There's a little overlap there, and I think that overlaps too. Yeah, okay, so those three overlap. But it makes, the, it turns this room into like a mini kill box that's designed specifically for normal difficulty. Like, this is what... This is honestly what you'd probably expect for a kill box on normal. Because <laughs> you just don't get that many traps. A lot of the ends... I think that is one of the only traps that's actually targeting the... Harvey path. That's... That one. That one. And maybe that one? I don't know if that would count or not. Yeah, so there's very few that were... that are actually on the Harvey path, which lowers the danger rating. They're all... They're all close to it. So it's not getting, like... It's not getting the full advantage of being lowered, but I feel like... It's hard. If you put a trap that is more than one space away from the Harvey path, most of the time, that trap is completely optional. Uh, like, there is no guarantee that the raider is going to run down here. In fact, I don't even recall a raider running down here, aside from when they fall into here. And even then, that's more because they were running this way, because they were going straight at the gem mat. Anyway. That's this room. So let's head on let's head on back. Don't think there's anything else in here. On the way back, these two second wave trigger. This distance is not actually far enough that these will trigger on top in time when you get here. But they're, because they will be visible, and they are a decent chunk of the way from this, it looks like they could be dangerous enough that you generally will deal with them. Uh, these two are both able to be pulled out of here if you need to, which is generally the safest way to deal with this if you have actually cleared the room. We already spoke about the monster closet in here. Didn't do anything else with the second wave trap there. Just one second wave impaler here. You have to pass by this. And sometimes people will stop here and look around to try and make sure that there's no exit traps. 
I did experiment with an exit trap here that had Hunter. It didn't ever work. Honestly, this trap here does more work just because sometimes they turn the corner and look this way because you cannot see. Once again, you can't see this trap on approach without actually turning to look for it. The actual outside, I did uh, roofing, just always one high roofs with just yeah, a little bit of a trim around the edges on here. I don't think that worked quite as well. I think it probably should be inlaid, but then it doesn't quite work with this. Uh, the only problem is if I actually tried to do that, the Harvey path is a problem because it's too close to the front. So I probably should have pushed it back a little bit, but I, if I pushed it back a little bit, then I wouldn't be able to do this path that I've done. Which, yeah, it happens. I, once again, I could have done something different. And the actual church bit at the back is fully covered with this giant roof. Just to make it look a little nicer. Uh, I think that got removed from a prestige at one point because I needed one extra point. I just never got around to putting it back. Put it back now. Doesn't change anything on the how this base plays. And I didn't bother doing anything special underneath here, but you can kind of see how I've alternated the church and the white blocks, because the white block shows the red better when you put the red colouring on it, as opposed to the white, uh, the church block, which it kind of looks a little faded because it's a, it, it's because uh, it's a grey block instead of a white. So that's how I did the pattern. I think at one point I did consider just leaving it as this grey into white, but I opted against that in the long run. And this here is like super obvious as a... This is either the gen mat, because it's a bedrock that doesn't seem to be connected to any other bedrock. It is either the gen mat or a second wave block size trap. In this case, it is the gen mat. So something you could do as a player that no one does, but and it's not strictly necessary here when it's fairly linear, but you could like come here and shoot it with a Falconic Plasma Bow Bolt. You could use the Vault Lancer as well, but Vault Lancer only has bow bolts, so it's probably not worth it. And you got 15 Volcanic Plasma Bow. So you could shoot this, and then that would allow you to see where the uh, where that block is from quite far away. Though I think in this particular case, you would pretty much see the gen mat before you could see the bolt. Because of how long this uh, hole is at the end. I'm going to put that there. Just make that look a little bit better too. Got the capacity. Yeah, so that is Pontoon Beach. It'll be on social until the description says otherwise. And my next base to show off will be Summit Argo. I shall see you then.